hello everyone so in this video i'm going to talk about the topic that is spina bifida okay spina bifida generally it is a congenital defect okay it is a congenital defect in posterior bony wall of spinal canal generally we are talking about the anti that is the neural tube okay. the neural tube which is start developing up to the first day of conception to and conception say is got development start over neural tube and end it up to the 28 uh, days of development so first day of conception to 28 days like neural tube jo hai wo development hogi okay and neural tube close at 28 days okay that means generally four week in between this period there is some causes which hamper the development of neural tube okay that condition lead to a spina bifida so here I'm talking about the neural tube. Okay, generally, you assume it is a neural tube, and this is anterior part of the neural tube, and this is a posterior part, or we can say it is a posterior wall. So, if any damage or in developmental damage, okay, due to syndication, anterior part is not developed properly, so anencephaly can occur. Okay, and if it is a posterior part defect is present, so the condition occur that is spina bifida okay now we talk about the anencephaly in that vault is absent vault absent now think what is vault so vault means uh, there is a two frontal lobe okay two parietal occipital and temporal bone in all this type of uh, bone okay there is some abnormality present and no complete development of this uh, bones okay so that defect is known as anencephaly okay generally this child is not survive more okay that is occur after birth sometime so this is condition that known as the anencephaly the anti uh, neural tube defect is present now our topic that is posterior neural tube defect that is spina bifida now here i can see it is a congenital defect in posterior bony wall of the spinal canal okay we talk about the region so generally it involves lumbosacral region okay generally it involves lumbosacral region now we talk about the etiology or causes okay why this spina bifida is occur so causes first is maternal infection most common maternal infection that is torch infection second zinc and folic acid deficiency okay so generally zinc and folic acid what do it help into the maturation and formation of dna maturation and formation of dna maso kar se help kar se help in maturation and formation of dna so if mother uh, get uh, pregnant okay and the mother has zinc and folic acid deficiency so definitely in formation and maturation of dna there is uh, some problem is present so for prevention this you have to start uh, zinc and folic acid tablets okay starting from a pregnancy so this is a prevention of this cause then third cause is teratogenic drug effect Okay, drug ni teratogenic effect has a most common drug that is anti-convulsion drug. Okay. So avoid this drug in pregnancy or the use of this drug many times in pregnancy that uh, damage or development of the child. Okay, this is a teratogenic drug. And fourth cause is that is chromosomal abnormality.
So this what are the causes of spina bifida? Mental infection, zinc and folic acid deficiency, the chromosomal abnormality and the teratogenic drug effect in that anti drug. Now we talk about types. Okay. So types, there are generally two types. One is occulta and second is aperta. Aperta also it is a cystica. So spina bifida occulta and spina bifida cystica. Occulta, okay, in that opening present hoga. Lumbosacral region make opening present hoga. So opening present at posterior vertebral arch of ls region lumbosacral region mein ek opening present hoga like once ek pouch formation like this is a spinal cord this is meninges so here one opening like or cyst like formation or arch like formation present in posterior vertebral arch of the lumbosacral region there is no involvement of spinal cord no involvement of meninges so here we write the skin is intact the spinal cord nerves are not damaged so no neurological problem or no neurological deficit present common site ls region and no involvement of spinal cord and meninges so this all are about the spina bifida occulta okay second type spina bifida occulta or cystica it has again two types one is meningocele second is milo meningocele okay now we talk about meningocele that means it doesn't involve spinal cord but is involved a uh, meninges. Meninges is involved but spinal cord remained intact. Okay, so here we write meninges involved. That means the protrusion of meninges with posterior vertebral arch spinal cord intact so that's why in this also no neurological problem okay neurological problem is not there now we talk about second type that is milo meningocele in that spinal cord is also affect meninges and the posterior vertebral arch three structure are involved okay so spinal cord nose meninges with posterior vertebral arch all are involved okay so definitely neurological problem is present And it is a very dangerous condition. Okay, patient has no symptoms. So this is about the myelomeningeal cell. So this is all about the types that is spina bifida occulta and spina bifida cystica. Cystica has two parts, myelomeningeal cell and meningeal cell. Now we talk about sign and symptoms. So here we talk about sign and symptoms that is lower limb paralysis, bladder and bowel dysfunction and the joint deformity. So these are the general sign and symptoms of the spina bifida. Sometimes patient is present with hydrocephalus deform, hydrocephalus condition also. Okay, so hydrocephalus is symptoms as the apron joint muscle. So this is about the sign and symptoms of spina bifida. In next video, I'm going to talk about the investigation and the management. Thank you.